Welcome to Surfcover Litimator in Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And this is the first opportunity we have really had to uh, address this, uh, and that is the Orlando situation. Uh, we do. A we have a lot of fun here. We do. Uh, but there calls for a moment of seriousness on occasions, uh, which we'd like to preface before we do a little bit of fun and variety hour. Uh, just our condolences and thoughts to the victims and the families of the victims of the Orlando shooting. Uh, this was more so, this was not just a tragedy in one community, this was a human tragedy. Uh, and an absolute awful one at that. Yes. Uh, this is not necessarily my business to communicate, but I am very close to someone uh, who is gay, and I am very close to someone who is transgender, and I cannot fathom what it is like to be an actual member of either of those communities as opposed, as opposed to simply a supporter and see that things like this still happen. Uh, so just to keep things brief, uh, because it's not our business to talk in depth about this. Uh, if you can send some form of monetary donation to any kind of relief for this, please do so. If you can't, donate blood. That seems to be a major call right now is the need for that. Uh, and band together as people, as humans. Welcome to Strip Cover Land, I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here with this week's edition of Variety Hour. Uh, we have whiskey with our cigars now. Like, we're slowly going downhill. <laughs> like, when we started this channel, we're like, keep it professional. Don't you're curse. You're slowly meeting me at the bottom of the hill is what's going on. <laughs> no, we started this channel, we're like, let's be very professional on camera, online, because right. uh, we want to have professional writerships at one point in life. Uh, and at one point, we caught the fuck it. And now we just smoke cigars and drink whiskey. And visit dominatrixes. And visit dominatrixes, which went over well. Uh, can we talk a little meta behind the scenes on that one? Sure, what you have in mind? <laughs> Let me take a sip of this so I can uh, wash this taste out of my mouth. Mmm. Much better. Buffalo Trace whiskey, by the way. This is... This is... Oh, go ahead. Oh, you first, because I need to remember what mine is. This is a Rocky Patel howitzer. Uh, I have a Drew Estate Java Latte cigar. My cigar makes a tank joke, and Dalton's tastes like Starbucks. Uh, we finally went to the cigar store, and Adrian's just like, whatever, just get one you want. So he let me buy the flavored Java Latte cigar as compared to the monster that you have purchased. Yeah, look at this thing go. Anyway, a little behind the scenes with the Dominatrix video. Uh, we had that idea when Hannah sent us the question and answer, and we're like, oh, it could be fun. Uh, so we get some people together. Uh, we get Matt, we get Josh, we get Brennan. Uh, we get meat. And we get meat. Uh, and uh, we say, hey, this is what we're going to do. I called Matt at like 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, hey, what are you doing, man? It's like, oh, nothing. I'm like, all right, I need you to come to my house and be a you know sex dungeon operator. Uh, and he did, in flying colors. Yes. Uh, we filmed, and then we all sat down. We're like... <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about this? Uh, there was a lengthy discussion of uh, we feel dirty. Do we do this? <laughs> do we publish this? And at one point we said, you know what, fuck it. And we had a but lot of fun. Before that, there was a lot of, I don't feel good about <clears throat> this. I don't feel good about this. This I is not a good idea. Uh, everything we've done for the last six months is about to explode in a bad way. Uh, but we had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I guess everyone had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, it was in good jest and good humor. And I'm glad that that went through. People, please don't take us too seriously. <laughs> we like to have fun. We don't. Uh, can we, well, let's introduce some new people. Yes, yes. we have new patrons. We have new patrons. To introduce uh, Marie. We have chosen, look, this is the shtick here. Whenever you become a patron of Strip Cover Lit, you are immortalized forever on set with an action figure. Uh, because we're continuing our promise that if you pledge to us, we will waste a good deal of that money on action figures. On some, we're just gonna piss it away. Yeah, pretty much. So, <clears throat> for Marie, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, why, you might ask. Very strong woman, beautiful woman, cultured, and also, right now, 
She is journeying through the complete short stories of Ernest Hemingway. She is slaying them one at a time. Look at that. He tied everything together. I did. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance for this next one. We, you, you have to understand this, and I hope that you can empathize, if not sympathize, with us. We are extremely Midwestern. We are very, very Midwestern. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name properly, so I apologize that I butchered it. If you could, could you please, please send me a phonetic breakdown of how to say this? I, I believe it's Avar Raffin Halderson. As far as either of us can tell. Close to that? We are extremely Midwestern. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I apologize so much for that. We are super Missouri. But since we are hitting Harry Potter hard, and that seems to be everybody's big favorite series so far, we have immortalized you with a lovely Dementor, uh, because you have destroyed us in trying to say your name, and we felt really bad about trying and about butchering it. Also, the first character in Harry Potter that I've been genuinely impressed by the creativity behind. I like some of the characters in there, but there's no, not been anything in a magical world that really popped and said, whoa, this is different. And the Dementor did it for you. Yes. So we have Marie, we have Avar. I hope that is correct. I'm going to sit her atop Gorvidal. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys. Uh, that means a lot to us. Uh, and yes, we've already wasted that patron money on new action figures <laughs> for you, uh, which is delightful. Uh, but we will put you up on the set. Are we opening your pop vinyls? I, I know they're so. collectors now. I, so, I don't know what that means, but I think we'll have to... We're almost going to have to get a shelf for the action we figures. We almost do, yes. Uh, I'll have to get another uh, another cinder block or something. We'll another cinder block? On top of the cinder blocks that are there. Uh, can we talk really quickly about a preview of coming attractions? Possibly something that Strip Cover Lit may be branching out to do. And you may be familiar with some of the characters involved already. So... When we started this channel, we wanted to talk books, we wanted to talk art, we wanted to talk literature, we wanted to do a lot of things. But we wanted to stick primarily to books with this to keep in tone with a community. Yes. Uh, we love the booktube community. We're big readers. We want to branch out and talk more art. And one of the big fields of art, especially on YouTube right now. Especially is, in the United States. In the United States is film. Yes. Uh, so if you are a movie buff, a film buff, whatever you want to call yourself, if you like to read the book and then see the movie, uh, Strip Cover Lit will soon be branching off to a secondary channel. If you don't get enough of us with a video every single day, uh, we will have a secondary channel. It is not going to be as intensive. It is not going to be as rigidly uh, every day we're going to have this for you. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to do movie reviews. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to start doing some short skits and short films. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to have uh, probably a bi-weekly uh, movie news mm -hmm. show. Uh, we're thinking about doing a topic once a month or so. Um, and if we're talking about future coming attractions, can I, can I break the ice on something? Our plan, as we, as, we will, as we will go into a bit later in this video, Steve Donahue, is perhaps to be full-time, right? Um, once full-time, we plan on bringing you a sitcom. Oh, God. A sitcom that is Ernest <clears throat> Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald living together. It's the odd couple. Yes. It's the literary odd couple. One of us will play Ernest Hemingway, the other will play F. Scott Fitzgerald. You can do the math. And um, it, we've got some, we don't have scripts yet, but we've got outlines of shows worked up. We have a bit of formatting. We're playing with it. Yes. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, another interesting thing about this uh, film channel coming up soon, which we have rolled around some ideas for names. We're not going to announce yet. Uh, it's not just going to be our ugly mugs. I mean, no. we appreciate the fact that you guys like to sit and listen to us bullshit about a little bit of everything, uh, but we will be introducing a lot of people that you may already be familiar with. Uh, if you watch the Dominatrix video, Matt, Josh, and Brennan should all be here and there. We will be every video. We will be every review. At least, at least to begin with. Yes. At least to begin with, just us. Uh, but we are going to try to have a rotating cast of guests. 
Uh, and we have a lot of friends. Matt has a degree in film, uh, so he's very educated on the technical aspects of film. Meat is very artistic. Me Meat is Josh. Josh is very artistic and is the biggest bo movie buff that I know. Uh, the man worked in a movie theater for way too long <laughs> and has seen a lot of movies. And Hargrave is an utterly delightful character. He is, and he wants to help me edit, so I will thank him <laughs> and love him forever. Uh, so that's what the plan is. Uh, uh, we don't have a huge format, but I, I hope there's a little bit of feedback, maybe what you'd like to see. Obviously, we're probably going to hit Fight Club. Yeah, out the out the gate. Um, we're probably going to try to do a lot of uh, book and movie crossovers. Hopefully so. Yes, uh, but they, it's one of those things. It's with time. With time, we enjoy reviewing books. We love it. That's our passion. But we also really enjoy movies. Uh, not as much, I think, with the fervor of books, but they have their equal purpose. Absolutely, they're both great forms of art that need to be addressed. I think that films stand to be the greatest artistic platform because there are so many voices at play in one piece. Okay. Right? You get that caramel aftertaste? Yes, I do. It's a little stout because you decide, hey, 90 proof whiskey, here you go. This was on recommendation <clears throat> from David at the Poptimist, correct? Was it really? I believe so, in, in his whiskey and cigar tag. His whiskey and cigar tag where he basically watched her and says, mmm. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Where are you shopping? It's good though. It is really good. Yeah, this is this is amazing. And I, I mean, he doesn't know what we're talking about because we buy bottom shelf stuff. Um, but how do you feel about this cigar, David? No one likes that cigar. It's it's just obnoxious. Uh, so, Film Channel, we're really looking forward to it. We hope it goes over well. Uh, it's probably going to be a little more freeform. Uh, probably going to be occasionally enjoying a drink on set and a relaxed, sit-down conversation. Uh, I, I think that we will definitely be bringing the same type of in-depth reviews that we do to books. Yes. Uh, because we have a multitude of voices for that. Yes. So we will not go uncombated. Because yes. th there have been times where um, al alternate viewpoints that we bring up uh, will probably be shot down on the videos, as they, as they are sometimes in the comments section, to our book reviews, which we enjoy that. We, we, we thrive on, on the conversation, on the argument. But that seemed to be the point of bringing additional people into this, is you're going to get more viewpoints, uh, going to get varying opinions. Yes. Hopefully we're going to start a good couple hate-fueled arguments between people on film, uh, and it, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. One of the things I want to do, um, which will probably happen two to three times a year, on that channel is ranking the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We will, I will, I want to do a re-ranking video with every movie that comes out, which will tell not only how well we like the new movies, but how well the older films stand up, right? Upon seeing the first Thor, I was utterly enamored. Upon seeing the first Captain America, I was, wish wash. I've seen Thor one additional time, and you know, it's, it's a pretty good film. It's decent, it's very yep. Kenneth Branagh. Uh, I am growing more and more love for Captain America the First Avenger. I think that is a movie that has a lot of rewatchability. So I, I think that, that will, those will be telling videos for many reasons. Uh, so that's the plan, and uh, some interim people that you might see. Uh, there are gonna be others as well. Uh, hopefully they're gonna rotate through and meet some new people. And I, I mean, I guess if you're in the area and this is uh, going to be a thing, hey, there there's you. your chance. Yeah, if you'd like to. Come by and yell at us. <laughs> so that's what we do. Anyway, yeah. what would you like to talk about uh, Variety Hour topic-wise? Well, uh, one of the things that was brought up on the last Variety Hour is the fact that Adrian does not have a real life. He simply lives in books yes. and Etc. To question why we're sweating right now, Adrian does not have a real life and there's no air conditioning. Uh, it was 95 degrees for the majority of the day today. Air conditioning is very expensive. So, that's why. So, one of the questions that was raised was, Adrian, what YouTubers are you subscribed to? Okay. So, on a personal level, I want to get this out there very fast and if we can maybe put a link in the description to the video I'm about to mention. We could probably it's do not, that. Not a big deal because it's very easy to find. Meg Myers, first off, Meg Meyer. Meg Meyer, Meg Myers, I'm not sure if there's an S on the end or not. Stephen Hawking, Stephen Hawking's. Uh, <clears throat> I have become very smitten with her music through okay. YouTube. Uh, and it was not until I started hearing her on YouTube that I, I realized that, oh, these, these songs are on the radio as well. But uh, her video, Tennessee, 
reminds me very much of Dalton and I in the BookTube universe. Um, I will not ruin it for you. Uh, open a separate tab right now, pause this video, watch that video and say, yeah, no, you guys don't do that. But this is pretty much what we do in, in the BookTube community. Um, beyond that, I am subscribed to The Rubin Report, which I, I very highly value, and I don't know if you saw it very recently. Ru Rick, uh, Dave Rubin announced that he is breaking away from Fora TV, and they are going completely independent. Which is great. That is chutzpah. Yeah. That is that is that is chutzpah. Not because Fora ever, and he made a point to uh, emphasize this, not because Fora ever censored him, but because he wanted the image of being independent. And because there should never be a question, he thinks, as to whether or not he is abiding to outside influences. And being independent, he can say, no, I'm not. Um, along the same route, I am subscribed to a fellow who takes a lot of wrath in that same community, Steve Shives. Um, Steve Shives has suffered greatly recently in his public image, but I remain subscribed to him because his An Atheist Reads series is second to none. Uh, it, is, it has, if I am not mistaken, undergone a revival recently. Okay. I think he took a break from it, but those videos where he will go chapter by chapter through an apologist text and tear it apart. And w no matter what side of the argument you are on, whether you are a theist or an atheist, those videos are very much worth watching because they, they make you think about the reasons behind why you do or do not believe. Uh, fun little snippet here. Steve Shives was, at Steve Shives, uh, was actually one of the first what we consider big YouTubers to subscribe to us. Yes. Uh, and that was just, I, I don't know, it, it felt amazing to you know say, hey, this guy that we watch and we subscribe to is, he cares about us too. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps he bought subscribed, I don't know, but I'd like know. to think not. Fair enough. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Okay. Put out uh, interesting videos from time to time. Easy enough there. Um, there is uh, Jeremy Johns, which I, uh, Collider Movies, uh, Screen Junkies. I think those goes without go without saying. Uh, the Armored Skeptic. Um, and these are people who are not in the booktube community that you would subscribe right, to. Right, 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 right. Because that would be hours yeah. of talking. Um, the School of Life. If you are not subscribed to The School of Life, they put out incredibly interesting content. They had like a 45-minute interview with Peter Gabriel that I was just enamored with. I, where the hell did that come from? But it's a snippet of, of something I enjoy. Um, I'm just trying to catch a few. Vegan Gains puts out incredibly interesting content. Um, Brian Johnson. Uh, if you YouTube Brian Johnson and Philosopher <clears throat> Notes, his videos will come up. The guy, the guy, wow, uh, amazing content, goes through motivational books, goes through self-help books, goes through uh, those types of, of books and, and breaks them apart and takes out the big ideas, he calls them. The big ideas from these texts. And it, flawless, flawless, just genius. Um, another one of my guilty pleasures is uh, Elliot Hulse, who has kind of jumped off the, the deep end lately. Uh, his, his stuff has really changed in the last year or so, but the early Elliot Hulse videos are, are amazing. Um, epic rap battles, obviously. Uh, if you are not subscribed to Epic Rap Battles, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Sit down and watch George Martin versus J.R.R. Tolkien. It's There's also Edgar Allan Poe versus Stephen King. There's also... Uh, Julia Child versus Gordon Ramsay, obviously. Shakespeare versus uh, kids, the children's author. Uh, Shel Silverstein? No, 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 no. Cat in a Hat. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, yes. Did you see the one? It was Eastern Philosophers versus Western Philosophers. That's a winner. Uh, those guys All are brilliant. All of them are winners. There's one. Brilliant. Bill Nye versus Newton, and Neil deGrasse Tyson makes a cameo. Brilliant. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump off this now, but those are just, those are some of the highlights to me. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's everything in the YouTube community. It's wonderful. That's what makes YouTube great. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm expecting like YouTube's gonna like superpose a huge placard behind us now because we just like endorse them, but I, it's I, not gonna happen. No, it's not gonna happen. Well, we're speaking of YouTube <clears> though. <throat> Tell them what I caught heat for. What you caught heat for? From Steve. 
from Steve. From Adrian, Steve. you'd never catch heat from anyone on the internet. Uh, not Steve. The comment was made uh, about being a full-time YouTuber. Yes. And how you know, we made it very apparent that's our end goal with this whole thing. Uh, and apparently nobody feels that way. This is all very hobby-based, uh, and people enjoy that, which is great. Uh, do what you enjoy. Do what you love. Here's the thought experiment that I keep coming back to with this. Imagine it's a Monday. You go to your 9 to 5, you go to your 1 to 10, whatever it happens to be. Maybe you work overnights. And you're suffering through. And four hours into your shift, a mysterious-looking woman walks up to you and says, Hey, I'm Jacqueline. I'm the uh, YouTube uh, CEO. We really like what you're doing. Why don't you go home? Go home and do that. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut you a check for exactly what you make here. And we're going to give it to you every week. You just have to continue your current output. Are you telling me, are you looking me in the face and telling me, you would not jump on that? I work retail. I would jump on that for half of what I make. Maybe a quarter of what I make. I work in law enforcement. I would jump on that so I don't die. That's my goal. So, uh, it, it's, it's, I don't know, it's So weird. the next time you say you're not here to be full time, <laughs> do that little thought experiment. The next time you're suffering through an eight hour shift and your feet hurt and you don't want to talk to people and you're tired of doing everything it is that you have to do in order to pay the bills, do that little thought experiment. It's, uh, there's a big difference between saying, you know, you want to do this for fame, notoriety, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, saying that this is what you love to do. This is what we love and to do. And you would like to do this instead of what you hate to do. And if I could pay the water bill with this, so be it. I mean, that'd be wonderful. Uh, we do really enjoy this. This is a lot of fun for us. And by no means are we paying any bills right now with this. Uh, but that is... You, uh, have you ever lived in an apartment? Yes. One of the perks of being in an apartment is you don't normally have to pay water. Oh. See, I own a home, so I have to pay all the bills yeah. to it. You get a lot of water bills. A lot of them. Big lot water of bills, them. I mean. Yeah, and apparently... You have the same amount. Apparently, everyone, I just, you know, move people in with me. I just, I hoard people. You are a collector of souls. I am. Of wayward uh, children. So, my water bill is always increasing. Uh, but no, that's, that's just, it's the, uh, the pipe dream, the romantic ideal of you could do this, and this is what you do. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's just because that's what we love to do, that's what we'd want to do. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having goals, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if those goals are lofty. I think it's something to push you to... to for Look, when, like Monse uh, lauded us for innovating. Without the goal of being full-time, the, uh, the motivation to innovate would not be as strong, would it? That is what... What is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. You got to pay those bills, right? True story. If you would like to pay those bills with something other than trading hours for dollars directly, because we invest hours in this. Yes. This is this is. Look, between between work and this, we're probably working eighty hours a week, right? Uh, we've talked about our film schedule before and how we do it, uh, but a normal day filming, just filming, getting the clips, is sixteen hours, which is a double shift. Uh, that's not including the reading time. That's not including the editing. That's not taking, including thinking of things to say about Thinking these of books. things to say, uh, watching other booktubers, commenting, social media, PR. There's a lot that goes into this. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's just that fleeting thought of, yeah, it's a lot of work. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. Yeah, this absolutely. Is, I, if I work a 16-hour shift at my real person job, I am dead on in the inside. Uh, I come home and do nothing. I can do this for 16 hours and go home and still watch BookTube. And I, I won't, I won't, we'll film for 16 hours and I won't sleep immediately. Right? Yes. Well, you're so pumped up. You're excited. Yeah. You got this done. It was fun. It was I got to read these books for next we can't, week. We can't wait to see how people react to this. Yeah. Oh, we just you whipped Dalton while we read poetry. I hope that goes over well. Uh, which, ironically, that seemed to be everybody's favorite part. Thanks. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta keep Thanks. doing that. Uh, so we <laughs> maybe weekly and variety. Hour. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back to the meta moment here. Uh, well, you mentioned the uh, sitcom that we'd eventually like to do on this. Uh, maybe a monthly thing. Uh, we realize that we are completely different people when it comes to being actors when doing skits. Adrian is the very technical actor, the rigid perfectionist, where we're gonna do 50 takes until we get that one perfect take that's perfect. 
Dalton is the method actor who says, when Matt decided to pull out the cat of nine tails, said to him, I didn't realize my grandmother was the dungeon keeper here. Hit me like you mean it. We're going to make this look good. Because we're going to do one take, and it's going to be real, and it's going to be natural. Uh, so we clash in that aspect. Yeah. So uh, another small thing while we're, while we're wrapping on the, the sitcom, one thing that we want to do with that, uh, which will become immediately apparent if we ever get around to it, is that we will have a different writer cameo, hopefully, in every episode. Yes. And we're never going to explain why Stephen King gets to hang out with F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway. It doesn't make sense, it's but just it doesn't need to. Yes. And we're going to name the episodes after the writer's works. Yes. <clears throat> like a great party. We'll, like Dalton's idea was we'll have a party, <clears throat> somebody's birthday party, <clears throat> and we'll name it The Great Gatsby. Yes. That'll be the episode title. Uh, I, I think it'd be so much fun. Uh, and that is something that hopefully once we're more prolific in the community and we have more time to invest in this, uh, right. that is the goal. Because I, it would just be a blast. Yeah, and it's an absolute no-go <clears throat> right now. I and mean, there's we, not we, a yeah. chance we have time. Uh, no. But long-term goals yes. are good to have. Uh, I think it would be just a riot to sit down and film. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I enjoy doing this. More so than I ever thought I would. So. Yeah, yeah, well, here's the thing. If we're talking personally, I was surprised just how little chiding I had to do to get you to sign on for this. Because usually when you come up with an idea and you run it behind me, I'm like, no, I'm yeah. not doing that. No. And that's usually the end of it for about a day. And then you come back, you're like, well, you remember that, remember that thing I had, that little idea? What do you think about it today? I'm like, no, Adrian, no. And eventually you chide me into it. Why, now, why don't we get jobs as waiters and we'll pee in the soup? The one time I ever tried to chide you into anything was when I took a Harry Potter class in college. I said, Adrian, take Harry Potter with me. We do all of our classes together. We are on the same schedule. Do this. And, you and said, here's, the thing. here's the thing with that. We never planned that out. No. We would show up the first day of a semester. Like, oh, well, there's oh, Adrian. You were here. I guess I'm going to sit next to him. Dalton would come in a minute after class started, and no one would be sitting next to me because I was the first person in the room. No one wants to sit next to that guy, and Dalton would sit next to me. And Adrian would be so studious and sit there and take in everything and drink it in, and I would take six smoke breaks in a 30-minute class period uh, because that's what I do. Uh, but there were, there were times during uh, night classes especially <laughs> Where, uh, we, we, you have a break during a four-hour night class, yeah. right? And Dalton would be outside chain-smoking, and I'd be inside rereading the text. To, Wait a minute. The professor said this about this text. I just don't see it. And the class would start, <laughs> and I'd never come back inside. <laughs> Three-hour class means I only have to stay there for an hour and a half because I'm leaving halfway through. Attendance was already taken. Yep. You want uh, <clears throat> an embarrassing, possibly, story from my academic career the only writing class I took as an undergraduate, I walked out, quit the class, in the middle of a class. Stood up, put on my backpack, and zipped left. everything up, grabbed my books. I was gone, baby. I was gone. I took a biology class. You know those little clickers that they use for attendance? It's always in the science classes. I never have. I, there's a little electronic clicker, and they pull up an app on the computer, and they say, all right, everybody, push your clicker. And you have a unique one that clicks, and it, that's the attendance. And they can do you know, questions where you know, it's A, B, C, D, and you answer, like poll style. But that's how they did attendance. I would literally sit in the lobby beneath the class reading comic books just so I could hear. And when, all right, guys, take out your clickers came out, click and go home. That was my biology class. I, I had to take all of my science classes in community college. Hmm. Um, which I enjoyed, the classes, um, and I had a lot of great teachers, but um, you animal. I know. That's what I How did. did you not enjoy science classes? Uh, I didn't enjoy biology. Uh, I took an astronomy class. Yeah. I really enjoy astronomy. Uh, any other science requires a lot of math. And ironically enough, astronomy requires a lot of math, but that's okay. Uh, I'm bad at math. So when did I'm you, awful. When did you take your astrology class? Astronomy. Uh, sophomore year, maybe? I can't really recall. But we, we can go outside. I'll tell you what all the stars are. I'm, Good. I'm awesome at it. On a bright note, this week was the Tony Awards. I fucking love the Tony Awards. I'm assuming you've never actually watched them. 
I, I don't know Anthony. Oh my god. You need you can even get on YouTube and see like the best of the Tonys. Uh, but it's the Broadway Musical Theater uh, Theater Awards, uh, very similar to the Academy Awards for theater. Uh, love it. Watch it every year. This year, absolutely swept by Hamilton, which is the new musical hitting Broadway. Wall Street Journal actually came out with several videos on Hamilton really? in the past few months. Very different style musical than the world has ever seen. Now, a few years ago, the Tony Awards were swept by the Book of Mormon. Uh, I love the Book of Mormon. Went and saw it live. Enjoy it. Uh, we're getting into a new wave of musical theater. Edgier. Uh, the, the Hamilton show I have not seen yet, but I'm <clears throat> vaguely familiar with some of the music. Uh, a lot more rap. Uh, very modern music, which is very interesting to put into a Broadway aspect. Um, I, 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 I don't want to say I'm a purist by any means and smite anything new about Broadway, but I think growth is good. There is an ebb and a wane to these things, though, isn't there? What, there in, is. In the 60s, mm -hmm. wasn't, uh, 60s and 70s, wasn't Broadway known as, a, as an edgier place? Uh, yeah. I mean, you got uh, the musicals like Hair. I'm not sure when that came out, uh, but that was an edgier show. And it, it's art. Art always pushes innovation. But like, like you say, there are ebbs and wanes to things. There is. But if you look at a very classical Broadway stance, I mean, Guys and Dolls, South Pacific, West Side Story. Les Mis. Uh, not Les Mis. Uh, they very, they got that 50s feel, that campy. Cats? No, Cats is not. The Cats is fairly modern. Cats is wonderful, by the way, if you'd like to get into that. Um, I'm actually counting on you to educate me in these things because I don't know I don't know much about. We should go to the theater. <laughs> I will let you pick the show. I think it's killer, by the way. And I will tell you when you're wrong. <laughs> but we have to go to the theater. Uh, you do not experience anything better than a live show, ever. Uh, wonderful experience. Yeah. So we will have to consider doing that. Uh, let us know down below what you think we should go see. I, I think that's dangerous. Right. Uh, we talked about doing plays on, yes. on the channel. Uh, which we could do. Uh, American Psycho. I heard about that. Yeah. They were nominated. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, we could go see American Psycho. Where would we go to see American Psycho? I, it's currently on Broadway, obviously, if it's being nominated for a Tony. Downtown Kansas City Broadway? No. Uh, but eventually, you know, there will be a tour, I'd assume, and we'll, we'll have to go see American Psycho. Uh, I have not heard or seen anything about it, so I think that'd be very interesting. You'll have to read the book first. I think so. A Misery yeah. had a comeback. A Misery was nominated for, uh, I think, Best Revival of a Play. I could be very wrong about that. Which, by the way, we did carry. We did carry. I'd love to do Misery. It's a wonderful story. Uh, but no, uh, <laughs> it, it's wonderful and beautiful and so Heartfelt. happy. It's, it's very touching. Uh, another, another Stephen King piece that is very much in the collective consciousness, right? I have never seen that movie. I have never read the book. I know what it is. Really? Yeah. My God. So, the film channel is going to have to happen. You have to see Let that performance. Let us know if reviews of, of Broadway would go better here as literature or on the movie channel as that type of entertainment. Uh, yeah. If you would like a week, weekly segment of On Broadway, please, <laughs> please tell me where that would fit. Um, I will make that happen I'm for you. Please <laughs> make that fit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you like this kind of thing, if you want to hear more about the film channel, give us a follow, give us a subscribe, like, whatever they call it nowadays on the social media. What would you be looking forward to from us guys on a movie channel? What would you like to see us expand into beyond a movie channel? I mean, we're open to ideas of what people want to see. Uh, and as the Dominatrix video shows, We'll do anything to appease people. Here's the uh, thing about that. Um, we had all these crazy ideas. We shot a bunch of things around. We bring your friends into it. And I'm the one who leaves looking most respectable. I never got whipped. You never even had your shirt I off. I never assumed an accent. I never had my shirt off. And there's my fat ass. Just like, all right, <laughs> D-robe. Uh, so, yeah. We're open to interpretation of what you'd like to see, and we like to have a lot of fun with this channel. This is our, this keeps us sane. Also, I took a lot of heat mm. in the comments section for that video because how, of how unexpectedly short I am. That is an unfair criticism. That is, that is height shaming. 
and I will not stand for it. Not stand very tall for it anyway. Many a times. If I am standing for it, you will not know because I will still look like I'm sitting down. Many a times in this channel, Adrian, we've done something standing and Adrian's like, no, they're gonna know how short I am. So I, I've had to crouch. <laughs> I've had to. That's not fair. Uh-huh. Fair. Uh-huh. Um, we want to keep you in shot. Here's the thing also. I have, I have had several people comment on how much taller I look than you while we're sitting. While we're sitting. Yes. People, always, people think that I'm taller than you. I am like a head taller than yeah. you. That's the best part. Yeah. Uh, so Which anyway. In, in a boxing match, you will have the reach advantage. <laughs> Reach but advantage. I will have the piss and vinegar advantage. The piss and vinegar. Uh, that's... Which we do still have to get around to. If you find me a place that is completely cool with us filming, possibly killing ourselves. We're probably going to have to use your dungeon. So we can make it work. There's so much room <laughs> down there. Uh, anyway, make sure you follow us. Hit subscribe. Social media. Plug. Go. Strip cover lit on Facebook. Strip cover lit on Pewtergram. Internet gram, inter interwebs. Strip cover on Twitter. Strip cover on Twitter. And I love Dalton on Tumblr. Is that new?